It has been a few weeks since I've been home, so this should be a pretty girthy giga haul. Oh yeah, oh my goodness. Oh yeah, I'm liking what I'm seeing. And guys, don't worry, that chewy dog box down there, it's not dog treats, all right? I promise, I'm not that weird. Wow, I have no idea how long this is going to be, but what I do know is that I have a lot of stuff here. And to be quite honest, like if I was a betting man, I would say this is going to be a 50 to a 60 minute giga haul. You guys, of course, already know the answer to that by looking at the timestamp there, but I don't. So we're going to see how it pans out. I'm not going to waste any more time. We're going to dive right in because to be quite frank, I just can't contain myself. I just, ugh, I need to just start ripping into these boxes, guys. But before we get to the boxes, I have a bunch of stuff out in front of you that came from basically Mercari because as I explained before in previous Giga Hauls, Mercari has this window when you have to rate and review the seller. So I had my mom open the packages within that two day window. Tell me if it's good or not so I can then tell the seller it was good and they can get paid. And also if it was bad, I can get a refund because if I waited until I come home like I did now, I wouldn't be able to get like a refund or rectify the issue. So yeah, all this came from Mercari. And as you can see, some wild, wild stuff. We're going to start with the not so wild stuff. Still pretty wild though, and that being the first 2023 items are out in the wild, and yet pretty much these are the only ones ever seen out in the wild. Like I'm pretty sure these two two packs, the ones I am holding, are the only ones that actually have been reported to be found, and the person didn't even tell me what store it was at. They just said it was at like a local discount store, so I would assume it's not like a chain like Big Lots or Ross or anything like that, but it's also kind of weird that they showed up there first, but yep, yeah, a lot of people are contending. These aren't 2023. I'm gonna stop you right there. They are 2023. You can see this is the first wave of 2023 two packs. Nothing new, which kind of stinks, but hey, at least 2023 is already here because 2022 took a much longer time to arrive like to put it into terms of like now this like wouldn't have come out until january or february like so we're three months to four months ahead of schedule so you can see this one's pretty cool you got manny mcgear and chris Revstopsky. i will probably open this because i need this variant with the white flag plus it's on absolute crap condition here but yeah, there's some nice ones. A couple of nice next-gen two-packs. You have Jet Robinson, Caleb Worley back, and then you have Flo and Saludos Amigos Ramon there. Here's one of the next-gen two-packs, RV Rodcap and Barry the Pedal. So while all of these are in like the same case, only these two have been found out in the wild. And again, the two you're looking at are the only ones that have been reported to be found. The only two that have been posted on eBay, Mercari, etc., etc. So... I wanted to get those so I can make a video on them for you guys. And you guys probably have already seen that because, you know, the gig haul is going to come out a little later and you'll probably have already seen videos on some of these mini racers as well. So I bought a set of these on Mercari and then I actually found another set at Target, which not ideal, but these are some pretty cool ones. It's the first on the road wave of mini racer three packs so here we have just regular mater but on the road mcqueen who's also in the single boxes and ivy who is also also in the single boxes and so i guess that's why they say both of them are new even though i don't know it depends on which came out first technically but now it's kind of weird because if you look at the stock image here ivy looks just pretty much normal there whereas all the mini racers like the single and the three pack version here are metallic. And it looks really good, like super shiny, but it's just kind of odd that they went straight for the metallic version because she definitely doesn't look that shiny in the episodes. You know, she's much more of a flat turquoise, which would be cool to see. And then of course you have the dinosaur pack here, which is just 100% elite because of the fact that you get the Tyrannosaurus or the Tyrannosaurus Rex. So it's our first look at him outside of the plastic version that came in the tube set, the on the go tube set, which I reviewed a couple months ago. That set did have this metal version of Kay McQueen. So he is not new, but 
the cave mater here is, which is really awesome. He is just, oh my God, I can't get over how just rocky, stony, and like weathered he looks. It just looks legit. And the giant tow cable as well. Huge fan. And they do refer to all of these as being new, even though the Cave Lightning McQueen technically is not because he was released several months ago in the On The Go set. But maybe they're just saying that set, no one knows about that set. It's only really sold at Disney World and Big Lots. So <laughs> we're going to just call it new. And it does look like the stock image has like a metallic Cave McQueen, which clearly is not the case. So it's just kind of weird that this makes him look metallic when he's not, whereas Ivy here makes her look regular when she's not. So I don't know. Mattel's just playing tricks on us as per usual. So yeah, I found a set at Target. So that's why you see multiple of them there. And oh my goodness, please don't fall. This is what sucks about the new packages. They don't stand up as well. The Christmas cars are back at Target, and I picked this one up for the wonderful reason of getting that stupid new blue gift, because the one that they did back in 2010 was green and red, and this one's blue with a white ribbon. So I will probably open this up at some point, maybe in a live stream, but yeah. They aren't technically new, that's why they're still copyright 2020. It's like the same exact packaging as before, it's not even like considered a new line. Or anything like that new packaging nothing although this stock image I've never really seen before and that looks really cool I don't know why it's the first time I've really seen that I'm sure I probably have but yeah really cool I didn't see a reindeer or the Ramon at the store I was at but I didn't really need either of those so it worked out and then this one here is a Hot Wheels 16 Angels first editions 2004 you guys might be wondering why did you buy such a random Hot Wheel? Well, this is the second to last Hot Wheels beat that video game car, playable car that I needed. Although it's like the only one in the game that isn't like a direct translation of a die cast they already did. Because the one in the game is like this, just red. It's not purple. So it's kind of weird. There's also a 16 Angels that's red, but the flames are different. So it's kind of like a hybrid of the two. I opted to get this one and it's close enough. So now I only need the stupid bully goat from the V drop set in 2006, which just seems insurmountable. Like I can't find that thing anywhere. All right. Now we're left with all of these convention exclusive customs. This is a subset of collecting cars like you know you have prototypes you have factory customs you have canceled cars those are all subsets this is one that i tend to stay away from just because i mean i admire the work that they do but i don't like all the blatant convention logos that they put on them typically like this one here i just don't like the look of that die cast space magical whatever whatever cars too this mater here is an exception to that rule for whatever reason they didn't feel the need to broadcast the convention logo on him so made is actually super awesome looking and you guys will likely actually i'm going to say you will see these in a full review on my channel at some point so i'm not going to go into huge detail of them right now so that was mater of course you have the blue ghost flames mcqueen there which is pretty cool you have, which is another one of my favorites here, this lime green Nigel Gearsley with flames. But of course, you have that logo again. And so I guess I kind of cut my story short there. But what I was trying to say is I usually stay away from these. But I decided to buy a couple. And honestly, there were some weird circumstances that led to me actually buying all of the ones that the seller had available. I didn't intend for that to happen. But weird circumstances made it so this hot pink mcqueen is gorgeous pulchritudinous if you may if i may mel dorado an interesting choice but it's one of the crispier ones in terms of paint i can't tell any blemishes on it whereas the others i could tell that there was something a little off here and there but mel dorado like i said he crispy man he's crispy and here we have a Dustin Mellows repaint or Miles Me Truck Malone in black. Again, this would be so awesome without that stupid logo. Like, I'm sorry, I just hate all this promotional work. 
Alex's toy chest don't care. But yeah, I was thinking almost about removing some of these decals, but I feel like that would really screw with the paint. Plus, I have to admire how well they were able to match the paint on the metal here to the plastic cab or the plastic trailer. I think that's awesome. Like this is an extremely well done custom and they all are. And there's one more here. The seller toted this one is like some sort of like prototype, which just can't, I mean, it could be like, I can make something and call it my own prototype, but I don't tend to call <laughs> customs prototypes or unreleased, but that's kind of what the seller was telling me this one was. Like this one was supposed to be super special and it's great looking, it's really cool. But again, I just don't like convention exclusives for the main fact that they have these obnoxious logos on them. I mean, it's pretty simple. We don't need to get more complicated than that, but the Mather was the one that like pulled me in. It was like, hey, here's one that doesn't look obnoxious. And then here's like another one you might like, like the Hot Pink McQueen and the Nigel Gearsley, because those are just, just crazy wild colors. And then something happened and I ended up getting all of them. So, all right, who is this from? Oh, I can't show this one. I can't show that one, guys. I'm sorry. That is the only box I can't show because it's meant for a special video down the road. So here we have a Tomica car, the Police Sally. So I decided to kind of go back in time because these are actually pretty old. I'm not sure how old, but they've been around for at least six to seven, maybe even eight years. And I thought, I know I have factory custom versions of these like on the Mattel molds, but I kind of want to collect the entire Rescue Go-Go line from Tomica because I noticed they've been getting rare and I probably <laughs> should buy them before they get even more expensive. Now this is probably one of my least favorites just because it looks so, so similar to the Mattel factory custom version of it. Now again, it isn't like Mattel's own Rescue Go-Go line. It is a factory custom of a Sally from Mattel, just like with police decals and a light bar on it, if that makes sense. All right, let's move on here. I do have a few more Tomica stuff, a few more Tomica cars somewhere in all these boxes. But before we get to them, evidently we have some more mini racers here. This won't really float your guys' boat too much, but again, I'm sure you have seen these in a video by now. I at least would hope so. These two minis should be dinosaurs. Like it should be the Quadratorcosaur and the Ankylosaurus. No, I was about to say the Ankylosaurus Rex, but it's just Ankylosaurus. <laughs> Let's not get ahead of ourselves. We don't want to take any thunder away from the Tyrannomysiosaurus Rex. Here it looks like we have a package from Get Me Collectibles. Just some random cars that I wanted to pick up. Nothing too earth shattering here. I picked up these two because I thought they were pretty cool and they're on international packaging. So it's like, hey, any chance I get to pick up something on international packaging, I'm taking that chance because they do not come around all that often. You can see it just says Chief RPM or Chief No Stall there on the back. Even though this one actually has a name, Roman Dunes. This guy does not though. But yeah, you can tell that they're international because of this here, the back, and the name tag. And also from Gimme Collectibles, I picked up a, wow, this is on pristine packaging. I was not expecting that. This is literally perfect. A 2011 short card Jeff Corvette. So another kind of one of my fetishes right now is short cards. I'm just kind of getting into all the weird stuff that I did not give two squirts of urine about back in the day because I don't know I was trying to afford just collecting the normal stuff and now that you know there's less and less new stuff for me out there to buy I'm like all right I'm going to try and go back and get some of the more peculiarities of the line such as of course you know international packages or short cards stuff like that what is in this small little box oh is this the Tomica stuff yeah it is I figured it had to be. So here is, oh yeah, so in addition to the Rescue Go-Go stuff, there was also this line where they did Lightning McQueens in one of the World Grand Prix Racers paint jobs. This one obviously is shoot to the Roki. I think these are some of the most underrated Tomica releases ever. I just think that it's so cool to see McQueen look like Jeff Corvette or Francesco Bernoulli. 
But here's another Rescue Go Go one. There is a factory custom of it using a Mattel Guido. Again, a counterfeit that's using like a Guido that's essentially like the Mattel mold. So again, this one isn't very exciting to me, but we'll get to the exciting ones. And yeah, just gotta look at Chu McQueen here again because that is awesome. Unfortunately, my Francesco was canceled. Like I ordered a Francesco in that line and it was canceled. So I don't have that one right now, but what I do have is a Raul Lightning McQueen. This is probably my favorite along with the Jeff Corvette. I just love how they blended like the three colors, the blue, white, and red on the bolt there. I think the white wheels are a great touch. Looks like they went with silver here on shoe. And it looks like they have the same expression, but yeah, really pumped about these ones. And yeah, I would get those before they dry up because it seems like a lot of this Tomica stuff is kind of falling by the wayside. And here we have another Rescue Go Go car. This one's Luigi, which again, Mattel, Mattel quote unquote factory custom. Although that one doesn't have the ladder on top. So that's what makes the Tomica one special here. Maybe I'll do another Tomica haul video with this stuff, but my recent Tomica video did not do well at all. So maybe not. <laughs> it doesn't seem like there's much intrigue out there for the Tomica line, which is kind of disappointing, but it just seems like that's the reality of it. What is this? Oh, okay. All right. I remember this. Yeah, this is, whoa. Yeah, this is pretty good stuff. <laughs> this stuff's pretty juicy and it looks like it was packaged pretty well. So I'll take that. I always get nervous. You guys know me. I get nervous. All right. I knew this one might have had a crunchy blister, and it looks like it does. So, yeah, you guys know I recently reviewed the Mater Hawk and Lightning McQueen Hawk for Forlorn Favorites, and it kind of got me on an Air Mater kick because I think, you know, again, like I said, obviously in that video, it's some of the most forlorn stuff Mattel has done ever. Like truly, I think all of these releases, like this one here, I would have done for forlorn favorites. In fact, I probably think it might even be more forlorn than Mater and McQueen, but I just think that <laughs> McQueen and Mater are more, I know this is going to sound contradictory, but obviously they're more popular. So I thought they'd be, you know, better for a video more exciting than reviewing Falcon Hawk Black here. But in my heart, though, I am a big fan of him, and I just think getting one on the package was something that I really wanted to do because I don't have really any of the take flight stuff in the package. And so I made sure to pick this one up back in like 2011, 12 when this stuff came out. It just doesn't even like fit, like it doesn't even seem right looking back that they were still doing tune stuff after Cars 2. Like, I don't know why I sometimes thought that they stopped doing like any tune stuff before Cars 2 came out and then didn't revisit it until like 2013, 2014. But that's not true at all. Now this four pack here is very rare and it's also super unique and cool to me. They don't do like these stand up vertical four packs anymore. And the fact that they did one with all the tuners, it has all of their art on it. Oh my God, I'm such a big fan of it. Oh, wow. You can see there are a couple Radiator Springs packs they did like this, but <laughs> who cares about those? Look at, we got Boost, Snotride, DJ, and Wingo all in the same pack here. And it's actually kind of reminiscent of the new Tuners 5 pack that also includes McQueen, exclusive to Walmart. So it's kind of like the early version of that. And that is honestly what prompted me to get it. And then a couple Radiator Springs classic singles here. I don't really care much about Sheriff. Cool, but not really a big deal, not really rare or anything like that. But again, going back to 2013, 2014, when there was a lot going on for the Cars line, or at least it seemed like a lot when I was just like a 13-year-old kid and easily overwhelmed. But I want Fabulous Hudson Hornet because this one's a little rarer, and I feel like anything with the Fabulous Hudson Hornet on it has become pretty valuable over the years. And so I wanted to pick this one up. There you go. Some of the first RSC stuff they ever did. All right, guys. So you remember in Giga Hall 11, when I unboxed Captain Longleggy, that custom, and it was damaged in many ways, shapes and forms. 
<laughs> and so I sent it back to get repaired and here it is like so this should be the new legit version of it repaired and hopefully it's in good condition now because I uh, would not want to send it back again. But you guys probably already know the answer to that because if it is perfect, I will have reviewed it. And at first glance here, it does indeed look like perfection. Wow. You guys know how like taken aback I was when I opened this thing before and it was damaged then, like the cone was off of the head, which I thought honestly was intentional, but... I came to realize that, you know, it was missing spikes and some of the headlights and all that stuff. But yeah, this thing's perfect now. Thank you, Michael Duffy, if you're watching this. And obviously, you guys will have already hopefully seen my review on it because I want to prioritize getting this review out. I think it's going to be a super exciting video to see finally something from the Rumbler episode, the Road Rumblers episode, which is gone pretty much under the radar in terms of merchandising except for your <laughs> Rumbler, Lightning McQueen, and Mater from McDonald's. That is pretty much all you got. So this thing's gorgeous. I'm not going to show any more of it because I direct you to my review of it if you have not seen it yet. Assuming it's out by now. Like I intend to do that video like in a couple days here, whereas this Giga Haul won't come out for another like few weeks, a couple weeks or so. All right, what do we have in here? What is this? Oh, okay. I was so confused for a second. This is from Jim Scavenger. Something that you might have also seen a video on by now, but it is a tank coat custom tractor, which is awesome. I love pink things, and so <laughs> this is pretty exciting, especially since Mattel canceled this one. So it's nice to see somebody attempt it. And yeah, I intend to review this guy, and you guys might have already seen that video. If not, it'll be out soon. So there's that. I have something else here from Jim Scavenger 2, I think. Somewhere in here. But yeah, there's a lot of boxes to churn through here. I don't know if it's going to be quite as long as some of those other gig hauls, but we do have a lot of stuff still to go, including more Rescue Go Go Tomica cars. We have the Doc Hudson Ambulance here, which I was most looking forward to because I feel like, well, actually, no, I'm most looking forward to this one, but this guy's quite a bit different from the factory custom version of him as well because he has the like ambulance logo on his hood, which he doesn't have on the factory custom, and the light bar is like entirely different. In fact, is this even like a light bar? It looks so odd to me. It looks like an alien device, but yeah, the factory custom just has like a standard police light bar on it. And yeah, this is really cool. Such a weird line to do, like the Rescue Go Go line. And Tomika was the only one to do it. Weird. This is by far the best one, though, because Mattel didn't do, or I keep saying it like that. I need to stop that. There isn't a factory custom counterfeit equivalent of this one. Okay, so that is what makes this one so special. And there's also a Mater that I need to get in this line. There's not a counterfeit version of that either. So these are really cool. I'm surprised because the factory customizers could have easily made one of these, I think. I mean, they've done plenty of factory custom Ramones in the past. So I don't know why this one was out of their capabilities. But yeah, you can see it's a Ramon. Love the flames and love the accessory add-ons there. Although I don't know what this one is here. I guess just another light. But yeah, really cool. It's the only box that's dented, though. Yeah, that's all right. I'll open it up. I'll open it up because I already have the filmer opened up, so might as well open them all. What else do we have here? Oh, this is a pretty exciting one here. Oh, my. So a lot of unspun prototypes in this one. So hopefully I can piece everything together. So you can see here we have a shell of Luigi. Here we have the insides of Luigi. I think this is all, yeah, this is all going to be Thailand stuff. So there you go. <laughs> Let's see if I, oh my God, no. Oh, and here's like the base for Luigi. So you can see a couple tires attached to it and the base. 
It's a very interesting prototype. Do we have more tires? Oh yeah, so we have the back half, the back or the front axle, whichever, for Luigi as well. So we have all of his parts. Poor guy's been absolutely dismantled down to the bone. Oh yeah, <laughs> this is the big dub of the box here, and that is the Mecha Naturbinal Tops or something like that. The Mecha Turbina Tops, I think it's that one. Yeah, the Mecha Turbina Tops dinosaur mini racer from of course the dino park cars on the road episode was able to get this one early and i couldn't be more excited i'm sure yeah i absolutely did a video on this already so you guys are seeing this for the second time but you're seeing for the first time my excitement to be holding him oh my god this is one of my favorite dinos combined with what you know will come out eventually the west philanopus I love the fact that that one looks like a VW bus, but this one's also super cool. And I didn't know he had like this tail back here. So that's pretty sweet as well. So yeah, there's him. This might be another unspun. Yeah, this is an unspun Ivy here. So a lot of mini racer action here, but yeah, this, yeah, I'm not going to dismantle it, but you guys get the gist that <laughs> she is not really screwed together. The rivet there is loose. It looks normal, but uh, oh my god, there she goes. Probably shouldn't have done that, but I had to prove to you guys it is unspun. I ain't messing around here. <laughs> oh my god, now she's in like five pieces. What else do we have here? I think I know what this one is. So another soon-to-be-released mini racer being one of the cabs from the trucks episode in Cars on the Road. So yeah, this is pretty cool. I haven't been able to get like anything early <laughs> in a long, long time. Like as soon as they moved production to Thailand, all of the early stuff pretty much stopped. And even then, like even some of the last Chinese stuff did not hit the like eBay Chinese market. Mattel's cracked down on letting stuff out early, but the mini racers are definitely some of the stuff that finds their way out. And even some of the 155 scale stuff, but more so the mini racers consistently find their way out of the factories beforehand. So here's one of them, of course. This is an unspun Suds Mater, I think. Or is this actually, I think, yeah, I think this is actually like the UFM Mater, you know, where he's glowing. Yeah, this is. The glow-in-the-dark UFM Mater on the base of the suds mater so that's pretty cool he's so glossy like look at that shine on him it doesn't look right coming from a mater and what do we have here lastly oh oh okay if you insist the spino crank shaft racks oh my goodness jesus in the morning this guy is sweet so, of course, we had the Tyrannomyciosaurus Rex earlier, and in a previous Giga Haul, we had the Tyrannomyciosaurus Rex without eyes, but truly the king of the jungle has arrived, or the king of the Jurassic Age, <laughs> the badass Spino Crankshaft Rex. So, again, I'm sure you guys have seen my video on him already, but that is my reaction to getting him. Wow, so cool. Really pumped about these two. Oh my gosh. I honestly haven't been that excited about this stuff in a while because it's rare that I get something that early. Like none of that stuff has been officially released yet. So I am pretty stoked about it. Alrighty here. Let's see what we got up next. This is some tight bubble wrap here. Oh, we have more Tomica stuff. Oh, okay. This is new Tomica though. <laughs> I keep saying this, but I'm sure again, I've done videos on this stuff because that's why I bought them. I made a point. I wanted to get the reviews out of these because I think they're so cool. But of course, the Cave McQueen and Mater from Tomica from the Dino Park episode. These are our first die cast, like full on die cast versions of these variants of the characters. You have the McDonald's version, you have the Mini Racers version, but we don't have like die cast versions of them yet until Tomica broke the ice and released these as their first cars on the road releases. I am sure Mattel will do these eventually, but 
right now, this is the best we got. And it looks like next Mattel will be doing Cave McQueen in another dinosaur playset. So who knows when Mattel will get around to releasing the diecast versions of these. And of course, then you could also talk about the Rumbler versions of these characters. And we know we're getting a Rumbler Mater from Mattel thanks to a Walmart listing, but these two have not been announced. And yet I think Tomika blew anything Mattel could do out of the water. Like I think those are some of the best Tomika releases of all time. And so obviously we'll talk about that in the video, but right now I truly do believe they are pretty top tier. All right, chugging right along here. I think this is, yes, another Jim Scavenger Custom that I completely forgot about. To be honest, I had no idea this one was coming and it's way more metallic than I thought it would be. Oh my gosh, this thing is so shiny. Whoa, the camera doesn't even want to focus on it, it's so shiny. That pink is just beautiful. Wow, this custom is so incredible. I'm a big fan of this custom. Of course, using Thomas Hatfield's Shifty Drug graphics. So it's like an alternative universe version of William Byrev. And a universe I wish we lived in because I think this guy looks infinitely better than William Byrev, who was a very dull maroon color with the gold. And this is clearly, in my opinion, based on my reaction, way better. Metallic pink over dull maroon. Uh, pretty easy decision right there. So something else that you guys will see a review on at some point or another. That one doesn't have as much urgency for me to review, though. Here we have some stuff that came from China. Now, this is going to be quite the conversation starter. A lot of people don't know about this. It's going to come as quite a shock to some people, I think. I would assume so. If I can get them out of the packaging. <laughs> you guys might be wondering, what are these? Black Doc Hudson's? Uh, yeah, it's a color changer Doc Hudson that changes from blue to black. And let me add, that's not been released yet. And who knows if it will? We honestly do not know if this will be released, and I would assume so. There's never been a color changer to be canceled before, like ever, and wow, it's already turning blue based on the warmth of my hands, I guess, but this would be the first canceled color changer, and I would be shocked if it was. I just feel like we haven't seen the format that it will be released in. Of course, we keep getting more on the road color changers like the Baby Torquasar. You have the Cave McQueen. So that's another version of Cave McQueen that's not die cast. And we've gotten some play sets, of course, the Whale Car Wash. But who knows where this one will pop up. It would be quite like the out of left field release because they just did the red to blue Fabulous Hudson Hornet a year ago. So for them to you know turn around a year later and do blue to black would be kind of surprising to me. So who knows what will happen with this, but no one has ever talked about this yet. It's very much so under the radar right now. So if you're watching this video, you are one of the first people to know about this version of Doc Hudson Color Changer from blue to black. And the black honestly looks really cool. It's like a matte finish almost. I'm a big fan of it. Wow, looks really, really good. So I'll probably do a video on that at some point. And what else do we have here? Prototype Neon Frosty is what we have here. So if you guys take or you look up a picture of Neon Frosty, he's not going to look like this. He has a different expression and the decals back here are also different. Like see how weird that looks and how incongruous. Yeah, because it's not supposed to look like that. Really sweet. Even though it looks a little wonky back here, it doesn't look horrible. And I've had a love-hate relationship with... Actually, it's been a lot of hate for Neon Frosty. First of all, I don't like the Neon line. I just think they're lazy. They didn't change up any of the decals like they eventually did for Ice, Carbon, and Carnival. 
and the first version I got of Neon Frosty. Granted, it came from China, so I can't complain too much. I can't expect too much. But the rims were all like blacked out and worn off. Like it's kind of weird that everything else was perfect, but these rims, instead of being like jubilant red like they are right now, they were like worn down and super black. So I had to replace that one, which was not cheap. But now we have some prototypes of it, which hmm, makes me like the car a little bit more. Neon Frosty, a couple prototypes. So that's exciting. Oh my gosh, we still have more to go. Let's dive into some comic books. So for you guys out there who are not Marvel fans, you should still stick around. Maybe I can get you invested into Marvel somehow. Maybe you'll see a comic book cover that just really, you know, is your fancy and you will get into it. Because I pretty much buy these based on like the quality of the cover. I'm not a big reader of comic books. I just like the novelty of having them and the fact that the covers are sometimes super cool looking and I can hang them about and display them and such. And it looks like there's some additional tape that I didn't account for on these. So let me just tear that off real quick and then we can dive right into it. All right. So the first one here is Nova. I just love the artwork here on the front with him front and center and kind of like the foil graphics they did there. Plus I think he'll show up pretty soon in the Marvel movies or shows or a show for him. And then we have a pretty cool cover for Secret Wars 2. You have the symbiote Spider-Man up there. You have Reed Richards, looks like Human Torch, Iron Fist, Luke Cage, and looks like She-Hulk in a Fantastic Four costume. I don't know what that's about. I guess she joined the Fantastic Four at some point because you could also see the Invisible Woman down here. So yeah, cool. A couple comic books there. Do you guys read comic books? Like even if it's not Marvel, do you guys, are you still into that? I'm curious. Looks like we have one here. This is reminding me of the old days of the Giga Hall when I didn't already like prepare things to be opened out of the box and it would take forever. Ah, don't worry guys. So this is one I was super pumped about, Kang the Conqueror with the time graphics up here. I mean, this is what made me want to buy it with all the clocks being warped and whatnot. With his introduction, Ant-Man, Quantum Mania, Ant-Man the Lost Quantum Mania, I knew this is one that I really wanted to get. Now, I guess it's not his introduction since he came in Loki, the Loki series last summer, not this past summer, but the summer before that. But I still think that Ant-Man Quantum Mania will be his true initiation in the MCU. And so I thought about picking that one up, and so I did. Oh my gosh. These comic books are absolutely <laughs> locked. You think that <laughs> people sending $100 cars with packaged comic books or package them with the same amount of care that these comic book people do. I wish that was the case. We're almost there. We have an amazing Spider-Man comic here. I really like this one because it has so many other characters on it as well. Other Avengers looks like, who's that? I don't know who that is. I like Captain Marvel, the original. And they're all facing Sandman, which seems like a pretty easy fight. Like I feel like Sandman's pretty screwed, but I don't know. Something seems to be going on. You got She-Hulk here, Captain America, Black Widow, Thor. Awesome. Love to see it. One more Cars unrelated to Cars thing, and that is a Tom Brady jersey that I sniped online. There are some really good deals on eBay for jerseys like this. Like, I'm not sure. They should be legit. I'm pretty sure they are. Either way, they're good enough for me. I love that it's all stitched and all that stuff. So I picked that up because I absolutely adore the man. I'll marry you, Tom. Don't worry. You won't stay divorced for long. Or you won't stay single for long. All right. We're absolutely losing space up here. What is this? Oh, I was like, <laughs> I did not order this. Peel and stick envelopes. And then I realized 
they just threw this in there for extra packaging. Honestly, it kind of feels like they're just tossing garbage in my box. Like, oh yeah, I'm throwing this out. I'll just put it in that kid's box. <laughs> It'll be fine. This guy put in a whole slew of boxes. <laughs> Another box. Bro, why are you just giving me your trash? What I really wanted was... Another Air Mater piece being this super duper forlorn three pack. Almost no one really knows about the existence of this three pack. It was exclusive to Toys R Us as well, but much rarer than the deluxe stuff and you can't really find too many on eBay. But this one I won in an auction for a pretty reasonable price I would say and I'm pretty happy about it. I feel like I've satiated my hunger for Air Mater package stuff now. I've scratched that itch. And yeah, actually this Giga Hall will be very long. <laughs> I'm noticing now this is a long one. Falcon Hawk 1 up there. So of course, different from Falcon Hawk Black. I don't like how they name them sometimes with numbers, sometimes with colors. Lightning like McQueen Hawk, Mater Hawk, and then a couple of the other Air Mater or Take Flight characters. Too bad these weren't in a three pack for Moon Mater. They were all sold individually. Wow, that's awesome. This will have to go on display somewhere and not in the storage because it's such a cool presentation. Like when do they ever do a three pack like this? Never, right? This is like the only time they've ever done anything like that. So really excited about that. And oh my, all right, so I have another box down here, but like it's ginormous. So I'm just going to bring up the items one by one. Because oh my goodness, there's a lot here. All right, so we have some mini adventure stuff in this box and kind of timely, a little late, but we have some Halloween stuff. Fillmore and Doc Hudson. Now Fillmore looks to be just regular Fillmore. Yeah, Doc Hudson, absolutely not. He's in a wild purple and orange paint shop, which looks really cool. That's what I loved about the mini adventures line. They just got so wild with it. They didn't care. They do absolutely anything and pretty much everything they imagine. Whereas with the 155 scale line and the mini racers as well and the micro drifters, obviously, while they still like expand into stuff that's not canon, they're still pretty conservative with their releases. Like they did a gold Francesco micro drifter one time. Obviously in the mini racers, they do some of the XRS stuff that's not, well, obviously the 155 skill line does that as well, but they've done Lieutenant Mater, which isn't something that exists. But you know, obviously it's no contest with mini adventures. What was more liberal? What was more exotic? I mean, look at this stuff. It's so cool. And yet Fillmore kind of stands out like a sore thumb because he's the only one that's not repping like a cool paint job. All right, we got more of that. We got more of where that came from, I think, right? Yeah, it's in here somewhere. But first, a Halloween pumpkin Ramon. So this came out in 2007, I believe. Let's check it out. Uh, I'm pretty sure it had to be 2007 because... It's on the supercharged art. Yeah, this is definitely 2007. So really old. This is the first year they basically did holiday releases. And so you can see it's a blister in the shape of a pumpkin with Ramon in it. But it's not like there's a pumpkin that you could actually take out of the package. Like It's just made to look like that. It's just plastic packaging. But yeah, that's really cool. And so, of course... Can't just get one, so I got the entire set. Doc Hudson here. And then the last one is Cruisin' Lightning McQueen. I don't even remember like where these were sold. Again, I was only six years old when this stuff came out, so I didn't really even know about the existence of it. But yeah, there's that. Getting back to the mini adventures. More Halloween stuff. Lightning McQueen and Ramon. So Lightning McQueen's decked out kind of like Dragon Lightning McQueen with the giant spoiler and the low rider gear. He's got like a chrome paint job with a yellow bolt. Ramon's kind of the same way. He's got even lower rider than he usually is. He's got a blown engine there. Not a big fan of his paint job though. Like I don't think the blue and yellow really look good on him, but... 
for the holiday special, I guess anything goes. So it looks like the holiday special here, these were collect all three holiday special packs. So were they only released in holiday special packaging? Like I feel like I've seen some of these in other packages before, but the way they word it seems like makes it seem like they're exclusive to these packages here with the you know Halloween theme. So here's the last one. You have Mater and Sarge from the Race Rod series. And so they're decked out with wild flames. Like Mater looks Halloween-esque right here. I mean, they all kind of do since they're wearing costumes. But again, like I've said, that's pretty standard for the mini adventures line. They all look super wild as if they're wearing Halloween costumes. But yeah, I'm going to have to look that up to see if like these packs were released without the Halloween theming. But I certainly wanted them with that because you got you know the pumpkins and everything. And again, the pumpkin blister, which was a big thing. They clearly really liked doing that back in the day. All right, speaking about back in the day, but not quite as old as that stuff, is a Storytellers 3 pack here of Fred. Again, another fabulous Hudson Hornet making an appearance. That's the third one today. Smell Swell, Lady McQueen. So you have a Storytellers 3 pack here. Which is a very iconic line based on, of course, the book, The Storytellers. So that's why you have all these characters that really don't typically appear together in three packs. So like Fred, Doc, and McQueen. I'm not sure what show this was from. I think, does it say it's from both? And now from a word from our sponsor and banged up. Hmm. I guess this is kind of like a double three pack, like two stories in one. Interesting. But yeah, I've always wanted to collect all the storyteller stuff. They're really a pain in the butt to store because of how awkward this packaging is. But that's all right. I have Bubba and the Showstoppers, the Motorama Girl. So if I can store those, I can store that one. Oh man, we got a lot more to go here. Uh, these were not packaged very nicely though. I'm not I'm not a big fan. I'm not vibing with how they're packaged. <laughs> Good thing you guys don't have to see it because it would blind your eyes. <laughs> Could do permanent damage if you saw how they were boxed. Here we have a three pack that is an air. You have Dinoco Showgirl 1 and 2. They're fine, but Lightning McQueen here. He's got the right mouth, but the eyes are not the aggro or the angry looking eyes that this Lightning McQueen should have. It kind of looks like he has the tumbleweed eyes with the mouth that is supposed to be here. And so that's why it kind of looks like there's a bigger crack there between the mouth plate and the body. It's kind of a weird little pack that I decided to pick up. He's not supposed to look like that. That's just a stock image. Wow, look at how weird that Motorama girl looks with those eyes. Ooh, they also kind of look metallic. But yeah, actually somebody on Instagram, a fan of mine, pointed this out to me and suggested I buy it, basically. And I was like, all right, <laughs> I'm not going to complain about that. I'll take that. And we have some more Storytellers 3 packs here. Now, despite how wonkily they package these, they still ended up okay. <laughs> For their sake, good for them. We have Doc Hudson, Flo, and again, Sponsorless. So this is Sponsorless Lightning McQueen now. Not Smell Swell anymore. And it has, I guess these appeared in the three different stories there. I don't know how that worked. I honestly don't remember because before when they did like Bubba and Brand New Mater, like that was exclusively from the Hoodwinked episode or, you know, when they did... The three Motorama girls that was exclusively from the Showstopper episode. So it's evident that they're kind of amalgamating all of the stories for these three packs, for some of them at least. So there's that guy. Wow, this table is absolutely booming right now. Booming in business. So two more Storytellers three packs. I wonder if I have them all now. I don't think there's too many more besides these ones. We have Wedding Day Ramon, Tractor, and Brand New Mater. So again, clearly I don't think all of these appeared together, but it looks nice because it's very symmetrical looking. You have like teal, tractor, teal. 
And I like the artwork that they use for these. Like it's kind of cartoony. Sometimes they use like the tractor art that they normally would use, but they would like make it look cartoony. And then the other art would be directly from the book. Now, unfortunately, they never released like this Mater, brand new Mater without the hood. They always just release the regular version of them. All righty, let's move on here to the last one, which is pretty exciting. Oh, yeah, this definitely is evidence that for whatever reason, they decided to take like all the stories and then release just like kind of random characters in three packs. And this is a very strange one. You have Dusty Rusties, Rusty Rusties, so those make sense together, but then you have Retro Ramon in it. <laughs> Love the artwork, though. Like, look how cool they all look in there, animated, or more so. I know it's all animated, but more of the cartoonish, drawn, artistic perspectives. I'm a big fan. So, yeah, okay, this all makes sense. And so the back shows what episodes they appear in, and so you have... Now a world from our sponsor, so that's Rusty and Dusty's book. And then you have Showstopper, which is obviously where the Retro Ramon appears at. And the backs are the same on all of them, just showing all five potential stories. All right, so wow, that was a lot. I'm not even sure if there's anything left, guys. I kind of want to show you this absolute mess I have going on over here. You want to take a look? Oh yeah, and we're not even done yet. So as you can see, we have yet to get to the flagship item of Giga Hall Part 12, the centerpiece of this episode. This Minecraft minifigure of a zombie on fire. Wow, I am just absolutely blown away. I can't believe I was able... <laughs> I'm just kidding guys. I actually found this in one of the boxes as I was going through the trash and it was in a box that didn't have a shipping label on it. So I don't know who sent it. It must have been like enwrapped in another thing or something. But if you guys know who sent it, like if it's you, thank you very much because I actually have some of these minifigures already and he will fit right in. So thank you. But yeah, guys, obviously this right here is the centerpiece of Giga Hall Part 12. As you might have already noticed in the thumbnail, there's always like one big item of each Giga Hall, I'd say. And this is undoubtedly that. It came with the Halloween mini adventures, the Halloween cars, the storytellers. So to say the least, that seller and I had, yeah, we had a day. <laughs> like it was a field day. Person had a lot of great stuff and I was able to purchase some of it. So thanks to you if you are watching. This is something I've wanted for a very long time. It's a special edition Disney Store three pack, limited to 5,000, and it is the only time ever any brand attempted to do the Cars 2 versions of Mia and Tia. So you can see that they have the World Grand Prix 95 Flame action there on the side. You have the Hudson or Piston Cup logo. Very cool. I cannot believe, honestly, that they never tried these. Like, Mattel never did them, or the Disney store didn't do them in, like, regular size. And, obviously, it also comes with, like, a turntable display and the acrylic shell. So, super cool. I actually ordered this on eBay once before, and it arrived absolutely pulverized. So, yeah, I had to send that one back. But second time's a charm, I guess. It's something that I really have been trying to get for a long time. And it even says a certificate of authenticity is included, which I did not know about. So really happy about that. And that is all I have except for two things. I do have one little box here. <laughs> I can barely even fit on the table because this thing's so big. This is something that you guys almost undoubtedly have already seen a video on on my channel because in my opinion, this is the most like time sensitive thing that I received in this Giga Hall that I absolutely want to do a video on. Like literally right after I'm done recording this one are these brand new color changers for cars on the road here. So this is already the third wave of color changers for the show, which is kind of wild to think about. But yeah, we went Dats Jam and Revo Koss to the pair of McQueens and now to Cave McQueen which is the first time Mattel has done a Cave McQueen besides the Mini Racer. And the baby, I love how they specify it's a baby, Quadra Torquesar. So again, second mention of him today because one of the Mini Racers that I got in this episode is him. So it's the second time Mattel has done him, which is pretty cool. 
I wonder if they'll ever do like a daddy Quadratorcosaur or like a bigger one, you know? I probably would assume not because if they're doing it like this, they could probably like do him as a single. Although he does look even big to be released as a single. I mean, yeah, I'm not sure they could even do him as a single. That's kind of wild to think about. Is this like our first deluxe color changer? That's actually a really cool topic. And to be honest, <laughs> kind of scares me if we will ever get a diecast version of him because of the fact that they aren't doing deluxes in 2023. The line seems to be dead. But yeah, it's cool to see this. Obviously, I'll talk more about it in my review of it, which you probably, or at least it's already been uploaded. And this is going to be pretty similar to the plastic version of Cave McQueen that's included in the dinosaur playset that I mentioned earlier on in the video. I'll show you guys all that stuff. I love how I keep talking in the future tense, but for you guys, it's the past tense. By the way, quick little comparison, I guess. Why not? McDonald's Cave McQueen. Both are plastic. Which is better? Ooh, a little competition there. But yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching Giga Hall Part 12. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comment section below. Have you gotten any new recent acquisitions? Any new scores? Have you found anything out in the wild? The only stuff I found out in the wild were those mini racers and the Christmas Luigi and Guido. Other than that, I really don't go to the stores. So I guess my store going has been very effective because I just went to one store, found those three items, and that was it. I didn't spend time you know, milling around the store that I didn't buy anything at. So that's actually pretty cool. And yeah, guys, that is all. Wow, that was a long video. So I'm going to let you guys go. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you soon for another video. Bye now.